Hey, what's up guys? This is Gary. Welcome back to the Ramsey Custom Shop. I don't know if you guys have ever been welding along with your MIG welder and all of a sudden uh, everything's looking good, but you end up with something that looks like this piece of crap right here. Or any number of many different things that can happen when you're MIG welding uh, and you may not be aware of, you may not be sure what's causing it. So what I thought I'd do is make this video and kind of show uh, a few different ways that your MIG welder can get messed up and it'll manifest itself in a crappy looking weld it's just not welding right things are popping and sputtering it's not welding at all so we'll go through the different ones I've got a few uh, pieces cut out here I'm just going to show you what it looks like when different things happen with your MIG welder and why you can end up with a crappy weld like this alright so the first thing I want to show you is is a little close-up of this weld here when you see something that looks like that and that, you can see that was welding along pretty nicely there. And then this I just welded. What that is caused from is when you run out of gas or you forget to turn the gas on. But if you're in the middle of the weld and everything's welding fine and you run out of gas in the middle of it, that's what you'll end up with is a, you know, something that's moving along great. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get that mess right there so that with all the porosity uh in it let me back yeah let me get your focus there better with the pits and the holes and just you know nastiness now to try to repair something like that is extremely difficult because um all the pits and all the the porosity you'll never get it out of there and it'll always want to pit and bubble up and make a mess you'll have to really grind that good to get that to where you can weld over it so if you see something like that, check your gas. In this case, I just turned the gas off to, uh, to do that last piece. So we'll turn the gas back on and uh, I'll weld up the rest of that there to show you that. All right, you see we welded more there. I'll show you a little close up. see that's you know probably a little too much wire speed a little beads raised up a little high on it but uh, compared to that yeah that's what you're looking for so just the difference between that and that is having the gas on and uh, yep all right all right here's our second example of what can happen All right, so we have good gas flow. We've got uh, our voltage set correctly. We've got everything looking good, but you notice that it, the sound was terrible and you've got all this uh, soot and stuff. You know, you can see it kind of puddled up there, big fat puddle. Um, and here's the reason for that. This is the settings on the welder and I'm using the Miller uh, 212 auto set and I took it out of auto set and I've got the thickness set for for eighth inch which is what we're welding but here on the wire speed I've got it set way too low this should be um, you know somewhere over in in that range you know uh, maybe somewhere in there it's a feel thing you have to kind of you know experiment with it and um, or you can just with this welder you can just put it in auto set mode and it'll automatically set the wire speed for you but generally this sets tends to set the wire speed a little bit too fast uh, for what I like but that was way too slow over there so I'm gonna do nothing I'm gonna leave everything else the same and I'm going to put this in auto set mode and I'm gonna put you back on the camera on the on the tripod here and I'm gonna weld again right onto that same bead I didn't change change anything everything's exactly how I had it set get the gloves on And the beads look similar, but you heard that really quick, uh, you know, the bacon frying sound rather than the, uh, the uh, you know, popping in and um, where, the, where the pops on the bacon frying are so far apart. 
let me show you one other thing that can um, now we got the welder set correctly you heard that sound now I'm not going to change anything I'm going to weld the last little section of uh, plate that we have left there um, and you'll hear something that sounds closer to what we started with and I'll, I'll explain that Okay, so you heard that, right? And uh, that was that was more back to the uh, where the pops are real far apart. Definitely not bacon sizzling and frying. And you see how it just is sitting way up on top of there. See how that? You can even see the the heat affected zone here around this one compared to that one. And I didn't change anything on the welder. The welder was set just like I left it. I, I didn't even. This is not edited together or anything. I didn't stop the camera. That and that were welded with the same welder settings. Here's the only difference. And a common mistake for rookies, beginners, I had the I had the torch up here that far away. Where I was welding that, I was about that far away from it. What you want to do is be down there, um, you know, within a quarter of an inch. You want to have the the uh, the end of your gun on no kind of angle. You don't want to be coming in at this angle or that angle. You want it to be as, as up and down as you can. Now, you're going to have to tilt it a little bit, whichever direction you're traveling with it, to be able to look in there and see the bead. You know, you, you can, let's, let's just say that that's uh, 90 degrees. You know, it's okay to be at somewhere around that if you need to, to, to be able to see it. But you don't want this, you know. Um, and you don't want to be way far away. You've got to get in there close. And if you're hearing that popping sound like that, it, may just, it means you're, you don't have enough wire speed or too much or not enough heat or the main thing though is to make sure you're in there close I mean that's one of the one of the key things all right so let me get it get another um, plate set up here and I'll show you the next thing that can happen all right you saw I tried to weld that uh, piece there and it wouldn't weld. What's the problem? I've got the I've got everything set just like it was. Well, take a look back here. The ground, and I'll put a piece of cardboard uh, between the ground and the um, and the table just to hold it off and, and keep it from working. But this table, you know, because it's got a lot of uh, mill scale and rust and and just corrosion on it, uh, often will not have a sufficient ground to weld very well and you'll get a lot of popping and sputtering or sometimes it just won't uh, strike up an arc at all. Um, so you definitely want to have your ground. Uh, a couple of things about the ground. If you can, if your material will let you ground it, you want to ground it to the actual workpiece. And sometimes, depending on what it is, you can clamp your workpiece to hold it steady and ground the material at the same time. You know, I mean, so sometimes that'll work, sometimes it's not, depending on what kind, what you're trying to fixture up. All right, and it also may be in your way. You know, if you tried to ground this across there, well, now you can't weld the bead up good. So you want to put it like this, and now you have uh, this held to your table, so it's not going to move on you, and um, and ground it at the same time. So I'll just weld a. So we'll cut this off. All right, you heard that really sounded good, you know, and the bead looks good on it. You can see that from here, that it's a good looking bead um, laid out nicely there. So uh, let me show you uh, one more thing here that uh, that can commonly be an issue with uh, when you're making building. All right, I just sprayed a little uh, fluorescent pink paint on there and uh, it actually uh, welds okay through that. You know, it's such a thin layer on there that it burns it off as it goes, but you'll end up with a lot of just, you know, soot and um, it's likely to catch on fire. So you really wanna make sure your metal's uh, pretty clean, you know, free of paint and oil. Um, 
again you know just things like this with just the mill scale on it that'll make up pretty good with uh, with no problem it'll it'll weld a little nicer if you grind it but if you got paint on it or oils or anything like that you know coating it down um, you could end up with suspect uh, penetration and you know just the quality of the weld so let me show you uh, one last thing and we'll come back and summarize at the end Alright, on that last pass there, um, anybody have an idea of what I was doing? If you look on the back. Look at the heat affected zone. I mean, it's, it's you know, way out here. And um, if you get something like that, and you'll, you're going to probably end up warping, even though this is 8th inch, it's likely end up uh, to be warped. You get a really wide, flat looking weld like that. I have a welder wide open on eighth inch material. I mean, it's, I've got it down on three eighths there. So, all right guys, just a quick recap here. So if you end up with something like this, uh, make sure your gas is on. If you end up with something like a big fat bead stacked up on top of your plate and no penetration uh, make sure that you are uh, you have your uh, torch close to the work like this you don't want to be up here you want to get it down in there close and uh, if you end up with a lot of black sooty looking stuff make sure your metal is clean make sure you have your a good ground either directly on the part or on a table or on a, an aluminum heat sink or something really close to the part so that it's got you know a short distance to travel and good a good connection and lastly if you end up with something like this you got it way too hot you just need to have it a little cooler hopefully that'll help somebody searching for MIG welding uh, and diagnosing your own problems and just an idea of uh, kind of what you can end up with if you, you know, get your settings a little off or you get a little out of kilter. Some people don't MIG weld that much and every once in a while when they pick up the MIG welder to weld something, um, they kind of forget, they, you know, don't have it grounded good, maybe they don't have the right torch angle. You know, you want to be down there as close to 90 as you can, but you got to tilt it a little bit to be able to see and push it along. But you can't be up here, you know, you got to be, you got to be down there close. I mean, you can't stick it in the puddle, but just off of it, you know, and you'll get your best welds and best uh, shielding gas and, and that kind of thing. I'm not a certified instructor. I'm not a professional welder. I've never been to any welding schools. I'm just sharing with you things I've learned out here in the shop messing around MIG welding. Have a good one, guys. If you're new to the channel, I appreciate you stopping by. If you're interested in seeing more of what we have going on around here, Take a look at the center of the screen and click there to see some of our most recent videos and most recent content. Thank you guys. Take care.